Hello, I'm Kelly Foss, and if you're anything like me, you love faces. I'm mostly a portrait artist. I just love painting or, or drawing people. But there's one fault that I continually see people make. It's outlining. Don't outline. Don't outline lips. It makes them look cartoony. So I'm going to go over that today and how we can avoid that pitfall and make our drawings look way more realistic and just have fun. Let's get into the demo. We're starting off with the toned tan sketch paper. I have a 2B, 4B, and 6B graphite, white pastel, and a red pencil. First off, I'm going to start blocking in. So that's just using some angles to literally block the image in. My first task is trying to see how large I can make this on my paper. Looking at not just tilts, but mass comparison. Lips can be a deceptively challenging thing to draw because we all have a knowing of what lips look like. And usually our knowing is big red outlined <laughs> lips. So just squint at the photograph and try to detach yourself from any iconic view of lips. Easier said than done. If I were to put a center line in this, it would curve around that upper lip into the crevice of the mouth and out on the lip again, and then tucking in under pretty steeply and then bouncing back out on the chin. And I'm going to use a normal white eraser, but I cut it in two and I sharpen it so I can have a nice little erasing tool and I'm getting rid of this construction line. It's not necessary, I just wanted to show it to you so we can have an idea of the fullness of this form that we'll eventually be trying to capture with our drawing. But right now, we're just trying to get that blueprint out there. By not drawing the lips just yet, not going in and out and doing all the squiggles, I can do these straight lines and really evaluate the spaces. And we can see this line here, but it's not a line. Please do not line that part of the lip. If you have a line outlining the bottom lip, <laughs> don't. So I'm trying to get that shape in there. This is neat, this upper lip kind of overhangs on that bottom lip. So I'm checking out this height difference and seeing if the top of the lip is that tall, is the crevice of the lip this tall. And I can see that this side lip is way too thick. Need to carve it down. And the Cupid's bow top bumps here are pretty close together. And I can take that line and go down to the shadow that's being dropped from the lip blocking the chin from light. Group it all together and see it just as a mass. And I can see how far in comparison to the side of the face. So I'm placing in the face that way. And I'm doing the side pencil hold so the pencil is making more thick, sketchy lines. With a clean tissue, I am pushing the value together, kind of a fast way of toning in an area. And I'm just using the graphite that's there on the paper to smudge. So now I'm doing a tilt comparison of the point to point of the edges of the mouth. So I'm doing these micro changes and a little bit of cleanup around the mouth, erasing some of that sketch. And I can see with the dimension of how the mouth is turning that left bump shouldn't be as big as the right bump. So there we go. Clean up this shadow shape a smidge. And back in to the mouth. Most of the moments on this piece are pretty soft. It's the fullness of the flesh that's turning away from the light. And, and there's not really that many 
hard graphic line moments. But I will say inside the mouth, especially the line that expresses the bottom lip into the mouth, that's a nice sharp line. So with this 6B, let's just fill in that mouth. And now I am taking that tilt out of the mouth down to the corner. And same with here. I don't want to outline it though, as you know. So I'm just doing light sketchy marks and ending it off with that little corner of the mouth. Do you see that last minute turn down? It's pretty cool. Okay. Now the lip doesn't get that dark underneath. If we compare it to the darkest moment, which is the inside of the mouth and the edges of the mouth, the bottom lip shadow is not that dark. With the kneaded eraser, I'm tapping up that line a little bit, get it less harsh, because as the lip, it's a downward facing plane, so it's pretty dark, the upper lip. Okay, fun time. Let's get some red on some of that graphite. So right now, I guess you could say that I'm tinting the upper lip with red. Just kind of bathing that whole swatch. And as the lip rolls into the shadowy mouth, it's darker in there. So with the red, we're actually using that this as though it was a dark pencil and doing a little more pressure within the mouth and then lighter pressure as it comes out towards the edge of the lip. Quite simply, this is what is called turning the form. It's making fullness by having the gradation of value. Okay, now I'm grabbing a 4B, sharpening it first. Always wanna work with sharp pencils. Now I'm restating that edge of the lip and rolling out of the shadowy mouth and getting lighter as I get to the edge of the lip. The eraser, I'm cleaning up some of that bottom lip. And with my brush, I'm sweeping away the eraser peels. And that keeps my paper clean from the oils of my hands, as well as protects my drawing from being smudged by my hands. Now back to the red pencil and just bathing that whole bottom light with a nice wash of the red. Now here, the red is gonna be more pure in this, on this bottom lip because we removed the graphite from it first. And this, I love it, is the most vibrant red there is on this piece. It is the cast shadow from the upper lip on the bottom lip. And the bottom lip, if you check out your own lip, as it goes into your mouth, it gets redder. So here is just two wonderful moments meeting up. It's the lip naturally getting a little bit redder and also the shadow is deepening this red intensity. So I'm, I'm pushing pretty hard the pressure on this cast shadow. You can see it has this little zoop line right down that center crease. I am softening the edge of that. Same as rolling out of the shadow with the graphite, we do that with the red of doing a little more pressure within the mouth and then slowly lessening the pressure as the lip comes into the light. A little darkening in the center crease area. I'm not actually drawing any sort of lip distinction right now. I'm just building this color. And you can see that it's staticky. It's called dither. And that usually happens if you're working too fast or your pencil's not sharp enough or your pencil's not soft enough. In this case, it is <laughs> trying to go a little faster for the sake of the demo. Take your time in this process of drawing. It's not a race. I'm pushing that harder again with that nice deep dark red. With a clean tissue, I am massaging that upper lip into the grains of the paper. And now with a clean tissue again, a new fresh piece, I am pushing the value of the red pencil into the paper. This helps me to 
get rid of that staticky dither. And it also allows me a little more space to build the value of the pencil now that all that pigment's been pushed into the fibers. Look at how formy that looks, just pushing harder in the mouth with the red and building it out or lessening the pressure as I come out of the mouth and towards the light. And be aware that the side wings of the lip are a little bit darker than that middle peak. And it's because that middle peak is catching a little bit more bounced light from that bottom lip, but don't worry about that. Just focus on turning the form, meaning making a smooth value transition. So push, push, push. And it builds, it builds wonderfully. I'm actually doing the red over the graphite now. The graphite, the more you build it, it has a metallic quality. I find it very nice to put a colored pencil over graphite and it mattifies it, takes away some of that metallic shine and it adds a real richness because there's like this deep color within it. The paper is tan, so it's similar to this pale skin, but let's add some blood flow to it. So I'm doing a little wash of red over that shadow pocket under the lip, adding a little more intensity of red on the lip itself, putting more value here on the bottom part of the lip, imagining the fullness of the lip just like a ball turning away from the light, it's getting darker as it is cascading down. Back in with a graphite. Handling that darker pocket corner of the mouth. This is a beautiful moment to show how full the face is. Some people shudder to think that they have chubby cheeks, but this little dimpling that can happen by the corner of the mouth and the cheeks fullness meeting I think it's great. I am transitioning my value from a little bit shadowy in that pocket there and slowly transitioning to a lighter gray. And I can turn the form a little bit here on the bottom lip. There's a downward facing plane that's a tad more intense for a moment. I need to add some darker value down to this chin here and also make sure that it's not getting too bright because if we squint that shadow is married together our intelligent eyes exaggerate things to us i'm adding just a smidge of darkness to that rim of the lip because i see the form of the lip is turning away from the light a little bit more right in this area and if you squint, you'll be able to see that. There's a pretty smooth transition right in this zone from shadow under lip onto the red of the lip, getting rid of any sort of strong contrast there. Okay, and the tissue, a little fog out. That's just flattening the shadow for me. I'm not trying to smear it around and make form. I just wanna flatten the static that's happening in that shadow space. I'm trying to make this adjustment of shadow crawl up to light a little bit smoother here and from the edge of the face in a little bit you can see right here as the plane of the face turns downward there's more shadow and there's a fullness here that i can see the shadow go around i'm just speeding this up because it really does take some time and trying to be delicate. And I'm tapping with my kneaded eraser up from the flesh onto the lip. And do you notice there's no outline for that bottom lip? We can see the difference between red lip and skin because our eyes are open and we see tan paper versus red lips. But if we squint the flesh and the lip, the bottom lip blend together. And we want that same sort of optical effect on our drawing. It helps to do these smooth transitions with harder pencils. That really is beneficial when you're trying to do a delicate turn like this and you don't feel like you have as much pencil control. 
though using the red pencil now almost as if it was just a graphite pencil. So with the pencil, I'm now doing very light creases. I'm not carving out lines on the lip. I'm kind of just doing little streaks as I see them in the photograph. It's giving the lip a little bit of texture. It's all about transitions. Really, everything is always turning away or towards the light. So the values on everything are always changing. Here is where the magic happens. I have the paper where it's clean. If you feel like your paper's kind of mussed up in areas of the light, clean it up with the eraser first. And then let's get to this white pastel. I am doing some little sporadic lines, just kind of dancing it around and using a clean tissue to smush it into the paper, the clean paper, not across the lip, not touching anything else, just trying to massage that white pastel into the clean paper so you can see that sort of fogginess that can happen and then building up the white pastel again. And then taking the eraser to erase some specific points on the lip in a very blocky, highlighty way. Do you see how blocky that highlight really is in the photograph? We're scratching that kind of clean paper with the white pastel. It's kind of magical, look at that. Oh, and then over at the side of the mouth here, it's a little bit upward facing plane and a big upward facing plane right after it pulls out of that cast shadow. Do you see that hatch? It's like a cross hatch. I'm going to take this red pencil and restate this bottom line of the lip with the red pencil. It looks very pleasing to me. I feel like the black is a little bit too cool for a warm, fleshy subject. I'm going to sign it. And there we go. I picked this certain red, but really any red pencil will do. It can look like a full color drawing with just that little bit of red added in because the tan paper really handles so much. And then also the graphite. Anyhow, I hope you had fun and learned something. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you next time. And until then, happy drawing.